Next speaker is a uh, quite remarkable guy. Adnan Barkawi is Virginia Tech's current undergraduate leader of the year and former regimental commander of the Virginia Tech Corps of Cadets. 2005 to continue his higher education. Adnan was the first Middle Eastern non-military track cadet to command one of the six senior military colleges in the United States. On April 19th, Adnan was naturalized as a citizen of the United States of America. During his time in the Corps, he's earned the medal granted annual to one of the cadets at a senior military school for exemplary selfless service, Military Order of the Purple Heart National Leadership Award, the Association of Military Colleges and School Awards, and the Beverly S. Parrish Award. He graduated with a degree in business and management and was named the recipient of the 2009 Wall Street Journal Award for Outstanding Scholastics and Leadership in the Pamplin College of Business. Adnan has committed two years to teaching in low-income communities with Teach for America. Ladies and gentlemen, Adnan Barkawi! Good afternoon, fellow Americans. It is an absolute honor and pleasure to be here today. Mr. Jim Smyers, thank you for flying me in all the way from Mariana, Arkansas, where I'm a fifth grade science teacher. I would also like to thank uh, Mickey White for all she has done to put this together. And I'd also like to recognize my wonderful mentor, advisor, and chief of staff, Dr. Judy Lynch, for all you do. And my friend, uh, Carlin Crowder, the chairman of the Virginia Tech uh, Republicans. You know, I, I, uh, I really believe that true speeches don't come from teleprompters or paper, but from the heart. And some 233 years ago, our founding fathers signed the declaration that allows us to stand here today. They signed the Declaration of Independence knowing full well that at the heart of their decision is torture if they were captured. We stand here to, today to realize their dream. The dream that all men and women are created equal and have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The same dream that our brave men and women in the military fight for on the streets of Baghdad and the mountains of Afghanistan. I had the honor of meeting a man, a brave man, who was in Vietnam, captured and tortured for seven years. And as I was listening to the journey of the courageous Commander Paul Galanti, I stood shameless. And I couldn't help but shake his hand, look him in the eyes and say, Commander Galanti, it is because of men and women like you that I stand here freely today. And the rest of us can forgo worrying about such matters as death, destruction, and the loss of freedom. You know, we have, we have indeed enjoyed freedom for so long that we are perhaps in danger of forgetting how much blood it costs to establish the Bill of Rights. Fellow Americans, I hope to share with you where I have sat before I share with you where I now stand. It was about four years ago when I landed in Washington Dulles International Airport. I was born and raised in Kuwait for 17 years. However, in the Middle East, you are not a citizen of where you are born, but rather you are a citizen of where your ancestors are from. My grandfather was a Palestinian, and since there is no Palestine, I considered myself to be a man without a country. I was very fortunate to be born to a family that believed in education. And my father gave me the greatest gift, a lifetime of savings to attain an education in the great United States of America. 
you know, as I was looking down through a list of states that I could potentially come to, I chose Virginia because it said Virginia is for lovers. And that hasn't happened quite yet, but I'm sure working on it. I started looking at the pictures of different campuses on Google Images, and I chose Virginia Tech because I thought it had the best looking campus. And that became my destination. As soon as I landed at Virginia Tech, I was amazed at the number of students that were there. 27,000 students. And the first question that I asked myself was, how will I ever be able to distinguish myself on this campus? Until I saw a man walking in what I thought was the best looking uniform. So I immediately go up to him and say, excuse me, sir, how do I become like you? Of course, he looks at me like no one had asked him that question before. But then he says the most impressive answer I have ever heard. We are the Virginia Tech Corps of Cadets. We develop and graduate leaders of exemplary character who are imbued with the concept of selfless service and are willing to serve the nation and the commonwealth, whether in or out of uniform, for a lifetime. was more than enough of a reason for me to sign up, but little did I know what I had gotten myself into. It was my second week in the United States, and I had no perception of what military training could be like. I watched my head being shaved and had no family to farewell. In fact, when I first heard the command on your face, I stuck my cheek on the floor when everyone else got in a push-up position. That is when I realized that I had no clue what a push-up looked like. It would make sense when the average temperature in Kuwait is about 140 degrees. You know, exercising was definitely not on my to-do list. But I managed to do half a sit-up and ran my first mile and a half in what remains a record of 18 minutes and 49 seconds before I woke up in the hospital. You know, I remember waking up and the doctor asking me, who is the president of the university? And I said, George W. Bush. You know, I, I began my cadet career with significant physical limitations, let alone the massive cultural gap. But I refused to give up. The Corps of Cadets instilled in me that if you set your mind to something, you will achieve it. And at the height of the challenge, my drill instructor came up to me, looked me in the eyes and said, Adnan, anyone can give up. It's the easiest thing in the world to do, but to hold it together when everyone else would understand if you fell apart, that is true strength. And that is what kept me going through the roughest times. You know, as a freshman, I learned that you cannot command if you cannot obey. As a sophomore, I learned the importance of coaching and mentoring. As a junior, I had the opportunity to train incoming freshmen, focusing on the principles of dignity and respect. And the greatest honor was when I was named the highest ranking senior in the Corps of Cadets. I never, ever thought that a Middle Easterner graduating into the civilian world would have the opportunity to command one of America's senior military institutions. But that, that reassured me that our backgrounds and circumstances may have influenced who we are, but on the soils of this great land, we are ultimately responsible for who we become. The values that are engraved on the pylons of the War Memorial Chapel at Virginia Tech were ingrained in me. The values of leadership and loyalty, service and sacrifice, duty and honor, and utprosum that I may serve.